This could be the most important haul I've ever done. Let's find out. It's from Barnes and Noble online. Oh, another one of those I got to blame Brickitech for. Yep. So this is another one of the items I ordered, 50% off. Came with free shipping, so I think they paid as much as shipping as I did for the set. But it is the my first emotions. Um, so that was easy. This is not the most important haul. I said it could be, but it wasn't. So uh, yeah. So this is. Uh, <laughs> I know what this is. This is the stages of a YouTuber's career. That's exactly what this set is. Yes, that's, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> Let me build it up. Oh, look. They put each character, I guess, in its own little bag. Or maybe not. It's just all the pieces. I'm going to see if I can build it like they show there. <laughs> So the stages of the YouTuber. This is the, hey, I just got started. Oh, this YouTube thing is great. Look how happy I am. I'm sharing content with my friends. Look, I'm gonna show people this teddy bear I got. Hey, look at this teddy bear. Boy, YouTube is great. Look, I got my first comment. Whoa. Oh, and this is when you've realized you've uploaded a video with a mistake, which everybody does. You're like, uh-oh, did I do that? And then later you're like, so what? Do it all the time. And then you spend long days and you get very sleepy staying up too late. Plus you realize you can only do content for babies. And then they take that away. See, I even built the guy wrong. I had to go back. Still applies. And then the final stage, when you realize that no matter what you do, it's never going to get any better. Or they take it away from you. <laughs> the angry YouTuber. To be like this, not like this. It's like they deflate you. That's what YouTube does. All right, people. I know it's a Duplo set, but I just thought it perfectly represents the emotions you feel the roller coaster ride that is youtube <laughs> ryan higa did a video a few years back describing the emotions or what it's like being a youtuber and it's pretty spot on because when you you first start everything's like rosy and you're just happy you make a lot of mistakes you work a lot of hard hours and then you get frustrated <laughs> What happened to my that was easy button? That was easy. I don't know how bad I look. Hey, Jabo, thank you everybody who's placed an order. We got several. And so we're going to be doing this helmet cam style. So it's going to be like sped up and yeah. So yeah, let's get to it. Oh, SD full and low battery. Oh, my cameras keep crashing. This is a big order. Um... I'm about three-fourths of the way through. My camera died again. It's, I'm using a GoPro to film. I think it overheated. Okay, so I just got done picking Dr. McBrick's order. It was a big one, which I really, really, really appreciate. Now i got to figure out something with this BrickLink because it shows it going in a bubble mailer. There is no way all of this is going to fit in a bubble mailer. That's a bubble mailer. I looked at it and I said, nope, I'm just going to put it in a box. Uh, plus, I got some of these bigger pieces like this. I mean, I might have could have crammed it in one, but that's not the safest way uh, to, sh to ship it. But um, he's going to be getting the brick. Signed, Brick Czar. Brick, this number 156. We got kind of out of order a little bit. And uh, so that's why he's getting 156. And I want to read his note real quick. As you see, I've got everything kind of in bags then i gotta go th and finish bagging that stuff up right there but he left a nice note on the order he said hey well this is my second order 
and it's half of what my first order is. The first order was really big. <laughs> but I just love your store and your channel. I'd love a sign brick and a pic video if you're still doing those. Thanks for all you do for the LEGO community, Dr. McBrick. Thank you, Dr. McBrick. Uh, so that is yours. I got six more orders to pick. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you guys. You're really helping me out, I, and uh, it's uh, greatly appreciated. All right, we finished it, but I got a problem. Where is it? 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 Right here. I'm supposed to have 52 of those. I'm missing 20. Here, a younger kid, or if you're a person that likes watching content that may be made for kids, involving what were the what were the things? I think I'm actually gonna read this to you here. This is from YouTube's blog, and I'll try to link this down below after the. It starts here. New data practices for children's content on YouTube. This is where it's going to affect me and you. And I know you, a lot of you guys are in the chat right now. Just sit tight on this one. This is going to be one where I'm going to talk for a while, but at the end of this, I'm going to open this up, and I'd love to have a discussion about this because that is the reason to do this. Now. Otherwise, I would just make this a regular video because this is something that I've been really, like thinking about for several days because it's going to most likely heavily impact me, and like I said, impact you as well. A lot of other creators, whether you're making videos like Ryan's Toy Review, which is I think what a lot of this is tailored towards. Not singling it out, but he's just like the biggest person. And a lot of other kids' channels, you know, the ones, you know what I'm talking about when I say kids' channels. And it could even go into the gaming space, like Minecraft, Roblox. I see a lot of people in Roblox are upset about this whole thing. Lego could be affected, but let me read this and then I'm going to to you. And we can go from there. So, I'm going to YouTube's official blog. And it says, new data practices for children's content on YouTube. Welcome to the It says, we are changing how we treat data for children's content on YouTube. Starting in about four months, which will be January, we will treat data from anyone watching children's content on YouTube as coming from a child, regardless of the age of the user. This means that we will add a question and use on videos made for kids only to what is needed to support the operation and service, which sounds great, right? Like, they're no longer going to be hitting these little kids with ads that are making them go out and buy all these things. Okay, that's cool. But here's where things get bad for creators and also it's going to trickle down to everybody. It says we also stop serving personalized ads on the site entirely, which is essentially what YouTube is run off of. When you watch an ad before a video, in the middle of a video, anywhere in a video, that is most likely a personalized ad. A personalized ad is one that runs where someone has been doing something, like say you love your videos, for example you're very likely to see a, a, an auto parts ad or something like that. YouTube knows that you're watching, what you enjoy, what you're most likely going to buy, and that's the advertisers that, that block that. And it makes sense. If I had a business where I want to run ads, I'd be like, okay, who's watching awesome Lego videos? Those are the guys that I want to advertise. Just kidding, of course. But we're going to stop serving those ads, which means that if you love, say you love Ryan's story review, I'm using him as an example because I think he makes a good punching bag. So, there's no longer going to be ads in Ryan's Toy Review. And luckily for him, he's, he's a giant channel and he has other avenues for income. But a lot of mid-sized and smaller YouTube creators that do this for a living, like myself, AdSense is it. So there's no longer going to be personalized ads in that content. Now, where this is going to affect you as a viewer, some features will no longer be available in this type of content, like comments and notifications, with like and dislike buttons also going away. So essentially, it's going to be a situation where you go to watch a video, and it's just going to be your life interact with, there's no comments, there's no likes. I believe they're not even going to show the description count on there, but I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, where did I leave off here? In order to identify content made for kids, this is where things get really tricky and probably what most of this conversation today is going to revolve around. Creators will be required to tell us when their content falls into this category. We will also use machine learning, which is the scary part, to find videos that really target young audiences. For example, here you go. This is you're gonna listen to anything on this entire screen. This is it. For example, those that have an emphasis on kids' characters, themes, toys, or games. So that right there kind of leads me to believe that the Lego space may be sunk. It's definitely not going to be a good day for, for us as creators, especially people that do toy stuff. I guess I can just have a little bit of what I do. I'm going to come over just to make sure. Just I do Lego videos, obviously. So for me, it's questionable. I don't necessarily target kids, and my content's not like, hey, kids! You know, like, you guys know what we're talking about here. I'm not going to talk about Ryan anymore. It's not that. But I do feature toys on my channel. I feature Lego stuff, which is intended for... What ages? 
what is this, seven plus. So that could be a problem. And a lot of other YouTube creators could feel the same way in the Lego space. But this goes far beyond the Lego space. There you go. Spider-Man and Elsa. There's another place that we can attack. That's the kind of stuff they're trying to crack down on. But this is in YouTube's fashion. When they see the iceberg ahead, they, they don't go around it. They go right through it. The creators are the ones that are in the icy water. And that's where we're going to be. So if you use toys, say even if it's for adult stuff. Like I've seen videos where dudes do like serious action figures only adults are collecting like hundred dollars, two hundred, maybe more action figures. Is that a toy channel or is that a is that intended for kids? Probably not. Clark and I love doing RC videos these days, RC trucks and stuff. Is that made for kids? Maybe not. You do here's an example from my life and I know another gentleman as well. I make comments videos, which I would say one hundred percent falls into this. I would be willing to fall on that grenade. Thomas videos where I'm showing the Thomas train or trap or going to Thomas land. 100% tailored to kids, right? There's no question about that. I will happily mark those videos to for kids. Will I stop doing them? No, because I do that stuff anyway, and I like making videos about it. My purpose is to record my life and the activities in it. Right now, the hack is kind of some good stuff. Will it be in the future? Probably not. It's over. Not because of these changes. But there's going to be other creators, and this is where it's going to affect you. There's going to be creators, especially if like Lego is affected. I know a lot of you guys are Lego people. If these big Lego channels that are doing this full time, much like myself, if they're not making money from their videos, they personalize them and they go away. The videos are still going to be monetized because of the text ads, which is what you see on like television. It's just general ad that they use. But most advertisers don't want that, like we're talking about earlier. There won't be any context ads to run. There's going to be a different way this. So your channel that you used to make a living from you may not be able to make any money from it anymore. Very little money. So a lot of these channels are going to go under. These big, big full time, whatever you do, potentially go under. Which means that it's going to hurt us as a Lego community. You may not have those big Lego channels out there anymore because why are you going to spend full time hours making content that you can't make money off of? That's the whole purpose of AdSense, in my opinion. It's not to get rich on YouTube, it's to do something that you love and you're passionate about and get paid for things that you need to do and hopefully make it better through growing your channel and having you come that way. So it could be the end of Lego, it could not affect Lego at all. In the end, like I mentioned, a lot of this is going to come down to you as a creator coming up with uh, whether your content is created for kids. My Lego stuff, it's debatable. I would say that it doesn't fall necessarily under the kids category, but I imagine there's a lot of kids watching it. And that's where the machine learning is going to come from. The AI, if you will, Skynet, if you watch Terminator, you know what I'm talking about. It's going to come through and it's going to make decisions for you after you make your decisions. I say, you know what? No kids watch my stuff. This is not for kids whatsoever. YouTube and the artificial intelligence might be all the machine learning at their level. I don't think they like to use the word artificial intelligence at all with it. To be clear, that's what it is. They may watch your video, just like the demonetization thing that we really joke about. They may watch your video and be like, yeah, this is for kids. And then your yeah, ads are gone, your comments are gone, your notifications are gone. And all of that sucks. Like, it's I have Greg's World right now that doesn't have comments, and I'll tell you what, it's very different making videos on Architect than it is for Architect. Let's alone, let's pick the money out of the equation. When I make videos on Architect, I feel like I'm having a conversation with you. I'm talking to you, we're making videos back and forth, or not back and forth, but like, things I say you're reacting to, and I react to things you say in past comments, and it becomes like this conversation that we have, that's the best way to explain it. In the world, it feels very much like I'm just making videos that go out to the world. People watch them, I can see some likes on it, and that's it. There's no, there's nothing that goes back and forth, which is why I may be starting a new channel in the future, because I don't think my comments are going back in there. But that's beside the point. You don't care about that. Do you want to know how to And I think the biggest question is, the thing we're not going to know until January is, how severe is this going to be? How hard is this going to hit? Is your Lego news video I would say my Duplo video I made the other day, probably not for kids, being that it's like a four and under thing. But like I, I held up this Lego set earlier. It says seven and up. So I probably need to tell you if you're buying this set and maybe Lego isn't the thing anymore. You don't have to worry though about me. I'm going to continue making for tech videos. I love making these. I, would, I wouldn't be doing this if I wasn't passionate about it. But it may go from being something that supports me and the fact that I can buy sets and share with you to like, hey, we might be digging into backlog a little bit deeper than we've ever dug before, which could be a good thing. But 
I, I joke about this, but this is this is very serious, guys. This is again, like I said earlier in this video, this is 100% the biggest thing that's going to impact YouTube creators and also you as a YouTuber. I've been trying to follow this as much as I can, and I see. I watched a video from a dude that does Roblox, which is very much like Lego. You have a younger audience. Also. Whether he considers his content to be made specifically for kids is another story. And I could guess I could take that into the other part of this that I want to talk about. And again, if you guys are in the chat, we're going to be opening this up to discussion in a little bit. We're going to go back and forth on this heavily. Being that we're only 11 minutes in, and I feel like it's gone a lot longer than that. Greg's World. Where does Greg's World stand? I'm more, I'm more afraid about Brookie Tech than I am Greg's World, although Greg's World is the primary place where I get to Greg's World is a question. It's a family vlog channel. There's a lot of those out there. And I know these people are afraid, just like I am. Because you make, I make a video, this, this whole, Greg's World is about my life. And I know a lot of you guys aren't subscribed there, but a lot of you probably are. Greg's World is about my life. Right now I'm in the chapter where Clark has come along. And I'm reliving my childhood through a lot of stuff that we're doing together. Me sharing my day with my son. Is that it? I make these videos myself and I put them out in the world with a lot of people watch them. A lot of them can't be kids though, I am not sure of it. Because kids have time. Kids have their, kids have their parents' eyes on them because they're talking to them. Kids are supposed to be on YouTube. And that's, that's also true. But you know they're not. They're not going to Does making a, a vlog of my day that has a floor in it just be in the Does that make it? Yeah. I just feel like this is the video that needs to be made. I wish, I wish there were more videos out there. Scouring YouTube, like looking for those, the, the keyword YouTube changes and things like that. Not a lot of people are talking about it. I'd love to see one of these kids' channels talk about it, like a legit kid channel that does toys. It's a channel, and I have nothing against this channel, but they're going to be hit with this. There's a channel called Izzy's Toy Time, and if you love like groups and trains and comics and stuff like that, it's a really, it's a wholesome channel. It's just like mom and dad and their kids, they love to play with toys. They're going to get destroyed by this, because very much that's what they do. But then you have other people, like Trains Are Fun, who Clark also likes and I like. He does Thomas videos, which you would say, okay, for kids, makes sense. But then you do a model railroad video that's probably purchased by people that are 50 and above. No offense to anyone out there. Is that made for kids? It's a toy, though. And when they use those words, those words are so, so painful that they use in here. The words... Kids' characters, which Thomas falls under, themes, toys, games. And does games, does that mean video games? Is Minecraft no longer going to be monetized on YouTube? It's hard to say. But what I know is going to come from this is the death of a lot of creators and people either coming up with alternate sources of income like Patreon, which makes sense, or you go to another platform. Like these gamers obviously have an option to go to Twitch or something. Adult. Like, I'm literally starting, I'm going to start my video, I, I joked about it, I'm going to start my, my video by I'm going to shoot off a gun and drink a beer at the same time. That's how all my videos are going to start. And then I'm going to run that into a Thomas Train video. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Uh, I don't know. It may not come down to any of that, but I think that'd be kind of funny. But, how... How's Brick Tech going to happen? If the whole, like, the whole Lego space is doing, it's okay. I'll still make videos. Hey. The ones that get the flag, like I was talking about earlier, if it's like having a kid in the video or kind of playing around with the Lego sets, I might have to change things up a little bit. Maybe Clark won't be able to get as many videos, which hurts me to the soul, because that is the whole purpose of what I'm doing here. I'm following my channel, documenting my life. How is my life?
35-year-old dude, like, I'm not 35 yet, almost, drinking coffee, I don't know, but I, I know Greg is 35, and the good news about this, before we get into the comments here, which I love to do, so cue up your comments and your, your questions and your discussions. says Patreon might be where it's at, and I thought about that. And I hate to see this come down to this, but what it might come down to, if Greg's World is completely demonetized, or Brickitect's completely demonetized, I might just have to open it up and do a Patreon thing that's like, guys, the videos, I'm not making any money at this, you guys know I do this for a living, I'd like to continue doing it for a living, so if you do like to see our content or appreciate our content, join us on Patreon where all the videos will be uploaded, I could do like trailers, like little short clips on YouTube as basically a way to pitch it to Patreon. I think a lot of people are going to be doing that. I think you're going to see a lot of channels trying to make this shift away from relying on YouTube. In fact, there's one that I watched that I thought handled it excellently, and his audience responded really well. It was this dude that did art videos for kids from 0 to 18, I suppose. And obviously his channel is going to be destroyed. So what he's going to do, or what he has started doing, is he's making a membership site on his channel where you can join for so much per month, almost like a Patreon. And that's where his art lessons are going to be. And it's really sad because the people in the audience weren't like, dude, you're a jerk for doing this. I can't believe you're charging us for your content. They were like, I really want to support you, but I'm a kindergarten teacher and I don't have the money to do it. So that, that really makes me sad. But a lot of people are like, I'm coming over, I'm going to do it. I don't think the guy's probably going to make what he's making on YouTube, but at least it's an option. And I think people, as time goes by here, especially once we roll around for January, I think people are going to realize that that's just going to be the inevitable way that it is. And I don't think people are going to be as, as nasty about putting things on Patreon as, as the, historically they, they've been. Most people don't like that. Uh, is there a Greg's World Patreon? There is a Greg's World Patreon. I haven't done much with it. I do have two patrons there. But it might be a similar situation there. What I may have to do is put my coffee drinking, even though I don't drink coffee videos up, but then if there's like this epic Clark video, I might be like, it's on Patreon. Sucks. I don't want to do that. Like, I love the idea of my stuff being out there. I love the fact that kids are watching my stuff. At least I feel proud of my content, like, that kids are watching it, and I'm not trying to swindle them with something. I'm not going to use any names, but I watched a certain toy creator's video a long time ago, really stepped over the edge on this. And him and his dad, they were riding the, their bike in the park, and I was like, oh, this is cool. This is really nice. And at the end, it turns out that that bike happens to be his branded bike, his his branded bike, that is available at Walmart.com. That's the kind of crafting. 
At least you know if I'm riding my bike with Clark, it's because I want to ride the bike with Clark and we're having a good time. I'm really loving the RC videos at this point, though, guys. Like, I'm, I may be as passionate about RC stuff as Lego. Like, I'm just having such a blast with it. If YouTube determines that's for kids, it might be the greatest RC Patreon coming where I'm just doing nothing but racing RC stuff because I just, I just love it so much. Um, M&R says, channel memberships like Twitch's subscriptions need to be enabled on all channels that meet the requirements. Uh, much agreed. Much agreed. BFAB says, you might need to promote your merch more and raise the price. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's all these options out there, like Brick Tech Live. Does Brick Tech Live need to move to Twitch? Me and Ryan, I forget his name. Ryan will have to, rem to remind me of this, but there was the guy that built Lego stuff on Twitch. Maybe that's an option to go to Twitch. I think, and I talked to Ryan about this, I think diversifying your your online status is never a bad thing. Whether it's putting a t-shirt on, making a t-shirt that says, YouTube changes suck, and then putting that on Teespring, or going to... Going to uh, mixer or twitch or whatever you need to do having all your eggs in one basket is that the phrase yes having all your eggs in one basket on youtube and relying on adsense is a dangerous thing and i've always said that i've always said that i've i've appreciated for what it is and this could all end tomorrow it is. but i've had an amazing run along the way i've loved every minute of this and I fully anticipated this happening someday, but I thought it'd be more of a thing like people just get bored with me and my content and they like move on to greener pastures. I didn't think it'd be the thing where YouTube's like, you are making videos that are way too appropriate for kids. You're gone. Sorry guys, there's my rant. Greg Drinks Water episode 264. Keep on Legoing. Tune in, man. If you would watch me drink water, I think we can make a run at doing this for a living. I would be really offended if I made a video where I do nothing but drink water and end up being more successful than what I'm doing now. <laughs> you hear about these channels where people like eat ramen noodles and slurp them up and stuff and they've got a million subscribers. It's like, okay. Okay. Well, let's do this. I need a beer. Yeah, I do need a beer in all my videos so I get, uh, I get the kids out. I thought about age restricting my videos, but then it turns out that that is not a good thing on YouTube. They do not like that. I'd be like, dude, my video is like 18 and up, no kids allowed. I'm just going to start a video just flipping the middle finger and shooting off a shotgun or something. That's, that's my plan. Greg's Mukbang, yes. Uh, do you, uh, Pico's Lego channel says, do you think you could find some sponsors and add their ads to the videos before the video starts? Hot Wheels, hit me up. Traxxas, hit me up. Thomas and friends, leave me alone because if that's a character that I can't do anymore. Thomas videos are going to disappear from YouTube. Uh, I would watch you drink water just because I watch everything you do. Dude, thank you so much. And I'm hoping that's that's the case because, like I said, I may be starting a new, a new Greg's World. I don't know what the name of it's going to be because I want those comments back. And if, if it's the good chance that I'm not going to have those, I might just be putting all my new content over on the new channel. We're going to wait until January to see how things fly. But I'm going to tell you guys, if you want to see what we're doing, I'm hoping that some people come over. And I, we're going to start from scratch, but just the way it is. And that makes me super sad. Because I, I really feel like this, Greg's World is my life's work, or was intended to be my life's work. I started that channel in 2011, I've documented everything in my life for the last eight years. And I really thought that someday I would die and I would have someone put a video out being like, that's the end, that's the end of the story. It makes me sad to know that it could potentially be in January. I mean, I could die before January too, so let's, let's just make that clear. Maybe that's the easy way out, guys. I figured it out. This is not even, I shouldn't even joke about that. That's not the answer, guys. You know where I was going with that. Uh, just start saying every single swear word to be an adult channel. I, you're going to find that. You're going to see these channels that they stop censoring words. They start doing things that are a little more, more adult. Um, but I feel confident in this. The last couple of days, and this is, the, this is the positive part of this. does really well, of course, because kids are watching it. I didn't say that. Either. But I feel like the channel, Greg's World, and maybe even Brick Attack to some extent, has become mostly Clark, Clark's World, and Clark Attack. And I want to bring it back to me. Not that I'm, like, it's not a part of my ego or anything, but that's, that's initially what the goal was. In the last couple days, I've come up with a lot of really, what I think are really cool ideas for series on the channel that I could do, that are completely new, and I, I hope people want to watch I hope that you're watching because of 
more than just the fact that we're doing Lego sets and the fact that we're doing Thomas Toys or whatever it is. And I, I come up with these ideas and I'm just like flooded with like hope and encouragement for the future. So don't take this all as negative. I think people will pivot. People will find ways. I think pivot is the best word you can use here. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep it alive. I'm, I know Greg's world can survive this. I may not be doing as well as I am now, but I don't think we're going to be homeless. If we are, Homeless Greg's YouTube channel is coming soon. You guys can watch me out on the street. Um, but Brick Attack, I do worry about the fact that they said the word to <laughs> excuse me, toys in there. Really concerns me. And, uh, this channel, again, I've been working on for a very long time, and it's like my whole history here is here. We have all this stuff. <coughs> Sorry, I, I'm still working out of cold. We have all this stuff that we've built up towards, and I hate to see it all come crashing down in the next few months. Life finds a way, says Ian Malcolm. Legibra says, say a few swear words in one video. Well, I mean, that doesn't work because it's a video by video. Ghibli says, if I have to do, drop a swear word to, uh, he'll do it. Brick the Lot knows what I'm talking about. Brick the Lot here? If, you, if, if anybody's here that's, that was watching this like after the fact, and you're just here to know about YouTube changes, like I'm the type of guy that searches for, it's your time to go. Now it's just me and my peeps. We're going to be hanging out here for a bit. Let's talk about it. What about your podcast? Yeah, there you go. There's an option. In fact, um, maybe I could advertise in my podcast. You guys love Missing Pieces. Logo here. Missing Pieces is actually coming soon. You would love Audible.com. Sign up for Audible.com where you can listen to all kinds of amazing audiobooks. Use code Missing Pieces. There, my intro is recorded. My, my ad's recorded. So maybe I can... I'll become a podcaster. You guys know... H3H3 H3 Productions. Their demonetized videos weren't doing well at all, so they went into the podcasting space, and I think they're doing better now than ever. How much for an iPod? This one it doesn't hold a charge. It holds a charge for like a minute or two. This one actually works. I might sell this one along with the home thing. I've had people ask about it. I don't know whether I should give it away. I, I, maybe I can give it away now. I need the money to feed my family next year, guys. I'm sorry. Does anyone want an iPod for $100? I'm kidding, of course. If you can't make jokes out of this stuff, what can you do, guys? There's a podcasting app. Um, it's going to be available on iTunes and Spotify. I believe that it's available on Spotify right now. If you guys want to go search for Missing Pieces. I did find out there, there are other Missing Pieces podcasts. But let me see if it's on iTunes yet. I believe it takes a little bit of time. I put my first episode up there, which is episode zero. Uh, and that is the... Let me, let me just check here. Bear with me here, guys. Episode zero is just my intro to it, so I wanted to have that up, so I at least had something there. But it's on Spotify. Let me take a gander. Um, oh, I have six playbacks. Oh my goodness! I'm actually watching it. It's still only available on two platforms. It's available on here and it's available on Spotify. Let me let me drop the link so if you guys are Spotify attackers, you guys can. Uh, I gotta promote the things that make me money, guys. Thank you for the six people that have listened to my podcast. First episode is going to be a banger. It's going to be the history of Brick Attack, the origin story. I think you guys are going to enjoy that one. Ninjaga Month is still happening. I did. I do have to admit, my wind kind of got taken out of my sails a little bit this week, but I'll be back later. I'm super happy now. b says he's not worried yet. He's going to play by year there. That's the thing. I'm trying not to get too worked up about it. Obviously, this is consuming me. I'm the type of person that really dwells on things a lot, whether good or bad, like, I, my mind is just, like, this thing that does this constant. But, there's no reason to get to get worked up about something that may never happen. It comes down to just simply classifying your content. Like, my mind When any of you are like, I stop anymore, I'm sick of this, commenting and leaving nice comments and liking my videos. They're angry about it. Especially these ten year olds that send me mail and they have all these cute little drawings and stuff and they love my channel. No more. You're not invited anymore. Get. Oh, we got our first donation. Which one says, you know, I'm here, Greg. Thank you very much. Five dollars into the pot for uh, next year. That'll buy me five cans of soup. We're good. We're okay, guys. We'll be up. We'll get through. I think. I think one of the most powerful things you can have on this platform, or anywhere, I think one of the most powerful things you can have is a bunch of people that care about you. 
have an online audience of people that care about you. That you may have never met, but through your videos, all the kids' content that you create, all these videos that are intended for little kids that you're selling the bike at the end of it, if they like you enough to, to follow you somewhere else or to support you on Patreon or send you a 99 cent donation from Stacked Studios, what more can you ask for, right? What if I had, what if I had 100 people that paid five dollars per month? If, if it came down to it, can you make me Lego videos? Five hundred dollars a month—that's more than worth it for me to make Lego stuff. I couldn't buy much with that, but we could still try to cut the content, and it would be justifiable, right? Like that's enough to pay for a lot of a lot of expenses that you incur in the month. So, for me, totally down. Be fab with a five dollar donation. I appreciate that, Be fab. Me and him had a conversation yesterday, and I. Uh, that was my bad, dude. He's a good man. MW says. Oh, that's AWM, as you know in some circles. He was going to quit YouTube. I told him not to. As someone who has serious OCD, or puts to get worked up over something stupid or hasn't happened yet, I wasted so much time worrying and being frustrated for nothing. I, I, that comment resonates with me more than anything that has come out of this conversation. In fact, that should honestly be the description of this video. It's worthless to get worked up over something stupid. This is, may not be stupid, but it hasn't happened yet. But it's so easy to, right? I, like the, I think there's a in life. Like, this isn't just a job to me, dude. This is my number one passion. And it makes me sad that I may even have to change my content. Because I don't want to. I'm making exactly what I want to make. I'm not making videos because of kids. I'm, I don't go to freaking Thomas Land because... I shouldn't have said freaking. I should have used the real word. I don't go to Thomas Land or Thomas Town because I think it's a really good thing. I still got to go there and my son. I had problems with the fucking thing that he did. And it makes me sad that, like... That would not be uh, a possibility for me anymore. But I mean, I'm, I've been lucky. I've been able to do this. Yesterday we did Stomp Rockets. I had a blast. Why don't I like the things that adults like? Why can't I be out there doing an adult thing? I don't know. This is what I love to do. And I hope I can continue. Oh, shot time. Thank you so much. Let's keep pushing. Or just keep pushing. Yeah, that's what it comes down to, guys. 
I appreciate the donations, though. Um, maybe we could save those for next year when things are tough. I'll make a live stream. I'll, I'll do a weekly live stream called Greg's E-Begging Live Stream. <laughs> It'll be like, all right, guys, I need uh, 17 cents on YouTube this week. Anybody out there? <laughs> I don't know, but like I said, maybe the Patreon thing will become a thing. I don't know. I, I don't push the Patreon thing. It's just kind of sitting there. I have Patreons or patrons, but it just kind of sits there. I do know of a guy that I watch, and I really like his content. His name's David DeFranco, and he essentially makes an entire living off of Patreon. He does exclusive weekend vlogs that are like an hour long. Get out the fake tears, says my hand. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. No, I will never resort to that. But he does like these weekend vlogs that are exclusive to patrons, and he's been doing them for years, and people have seemed to really support him. I think he makes like, I want to say like $2,000 a month, something like that, at $5 per person. It's like half of a Netflix membership. Because people are invested in him, and I guess that's why. I'm hoping that people are.